Hello, so we are going to discuss the job sequencing with deadline problem using branch and bound in this video. So, you have seen this job sequencing problem in past and you might have solved this with different approach. But when we talk about branch and bound approach, we have to modify its definition a bit. Let's see what that modification is. Actually, whenever we say that we are going to perform a job sequencing, we relate this problem with the profit. So whenever we perform a job, we get some profit out of it. However, this profit gaining problem will be a maximization problem. And in branch and bound, we deal with the minimization problem. So what we have done here, we have converted the profit to penalty. Now, if I don't include a job or if I don't perform a job, I will be charged a penalty. So my aim will be to minimize this penalty, right? So the maximization problem is now turned to the minimization problem. So what we have done here, we have just renamed the profit to penalty so that we can have the branch and bound solution for this. Everything else is same, right? Now we will see how branch and bound is applied and how we are going to have the result. So we have two types of parameters associated with the nodes of state search space. Okay. The first parameter is u. So what u is defining for us, u is giving the sum of all penalties which are not the part of solution. Okay. So say if I have not considered job 1 and job 3, so the penalty is 5 and 6. Penalty is 11. So up till a point, whatsoever jobs I have included in my solution, except that whatsoever penalties are existing, I'll take a sum of that. And that will act as a upper bound for me. Now, what is the role of this upper bound? Upper bound will tell me that beyond this, okay, beyond this, you are not going to be charged any more penalty because we have taken all the penalties that are remaining. Okay, we have taken the sum of all penalties that are remaining. So, in any case, my penalty will not go higher than that. So, how we are going to mathematically represent this? This is going to represent it as summation of i that does not belong to s. What is s? S is our solution. So, all the penalties that is p i for which are not the part of solution, sum of all the penalties, right? Another cost factor that we associate with every node is c. c is actually sum of all the penalties till the last job is considered. Say assume I have considered till job 3 only here. Okay. So if I have considered till job 3 only and only one was included before the 2 and this 2 was not included. So in my solution when I was traveling through my search space I have included 1, I have not included 2 and I have included 3. So Sum of all the penalties till this point, till the last job is included. I have to count that penalty. Okay. So, that penalties will be included. So, in this case, the penalty will be 10. So, I have not included 10 in my solution. So, the penalty is 10 in this. Now, we will look to the solution of this problem. How we are going to proceed. So, we'll start with the root node. Now, we have not considered any job till this point. Since we have not considered any job, we are associating u and c as 0 and infinity because up till now we have not excluded any job, neither we have included. So, the upper bound is for me is infinity. Okay. In the association with this, I have included one variable upper that is going to maintain the 
lowest valley of you that is so far encountered. So so far I have encountered you as infinity. So this valley is infinity till this point. Now from this point I have four options. I can include J1, I can include J2, J3 or J4. Now one by one we will see what will be the value of u in c corresponding now if i include job one only then none of the job is excluded so up till this point i have not excluded two three four i have just considered one so my c will be zero because i have not excluded any job till now However, my u will be equal to 10 plus 6 plus 3, that is 19. So, my u will be 19, my c will be 0. So, I can say that I have to now update my upper to 19 because 19 is lower than infinity. I have received a value of u which is lower than the existing value. Fine. Now, coming to j2. For J2, my U will be. So, for J2, I have excluded 1. Okay. Now, I am considering only second job. So, U will be 5 plus 6 plus 3. So, this comes out to be a total of 14. Now, what about C? My C will be the cost of the job or the penalties of the job. I have excluded. So if I have included 2, I have excluded 1 right now. So this cost will be 5, the penalty of 1. I am not including 3 and 4 because I have traveled till 2 only. So u and c will be 14 and 5 for this case. Now coming to the next node. But before that, we have to update upper. So as you can see, that now u is 14 so and the previous upper value is 19 so i can overwrite this value and update it to 14 now we have to perform the same operation for j3 so in case of j3 we have excluded job 1 and job 2 so for this c will be equal to 15 now, if I am saying that C is 15 for J3, then the penalties which has already occurred, that is costing me 15. However, if I have a look at my upper, I can easily see that the upper is saying that the minimum amount of penalties that I will be getting if I am traveling, that is 14. So, I can easily bound this and I can say that I am discarding this path. I am not going to explore this path anymore. Now same is the case with 4. So in case of J4, C will be 5 plus 10 plus 6 that is 21. Again 21 is greater than 14 so I will discard this rule. Now, one thing more that we have to pay attention is the deadline and time. How deadline and time is going to perform a role in this. So, for this, let's see that if I am performing only job 1. So, the time required is say 1 unit of time or I can say 1 hour. So, 1 hour is required and the deadline is again 1 hour okay I can complete it if I'm only performing job 2 so job 2 is taking 2 hours and deadline is 3 fine if I'm only performing job 3 however we have discarded this so the deadline is 2 and time taken is 1 so we can and the time taken here in case of 4 is 1 and deadline is 4 so all the four cases are possible however we have discarded this considering the penalty score okay now we will further see that how our path is going to extend further. Now say J1 can be extended to J2, J3 and J4. So 
up till this point my j1 is included now i can include j2 or i can include j3 or i can include j4 and similarly i have to calculate updated u and c values so if i am including j2 that means i have included one and i have including two also so my c will be again zero because i have not excluded any two up till now and my u will be 3 and 4 cos that is 6 plus 3 so this will be equal to 9 so u will be 9 and c will be 0 now in case of j3 but before j3 we should update this upper to 9 okay now in case of j3 if i am including the job 3 that means i am excluding job 2 so only job 1 and job 3 is included now c will be 10 as i have excluded this job the second job now if my c is 10 and i have a look at my upper i can clearly say that i can discard this job 3 okay. now in case of j4 i have excluded j2 and j3 so c will be 16 again the same reason the upper value is much lower than the c value so we will discard j now for the node j2 so i am exploring this i can go to j3 or i can go to j4 now if i am calculating the c and u parameters for j3 here so up till now we have excluded this we have included j2 now we are including j3 so c will be 5 because i have excluded c the only job 1 and u will be 5 plus c that is 8 so the value of u will be 8 and value of c will be 5 now again i can see that my upper will get updated so from 9 it will be now 8 so performing the same thing for my j4 so for j4 i have excluded my job 1 i have included job 2 and have excluded j3 now c will be 11 now the c is higher than my upper so i will definitely exclude this j4 now okay i'll not go further explore this j4 so we are left with only two that is this j2 and this j3 so let's see from j2 i can go to j3 or i can go to j4 but remember we have to see the time and deadline as well now if i'm following the path i have included j1 so j1 was taking 1 hour and then j2 j2 was taking 2 hour and the deadline was 1 and 3 So if I make a total of this one plus two, that is three. Okay, so I can say that I'll complete my job one in first hour, and the remaining two hour I'll give to job two. So my job two is also completed. Now if I include J three, there will be one more hour, and the deadline will be over because I have already said that I will go up till three hours. So the deadline was two. Deadline is over, and similar is the case with J four. so both the cases i cannot move further right now coming back to my this note so this note says that i have included j2 and j3 so the timeline for j2 is 2 and timeline for j3 is 1 okay and deadline for this is 3 2 so i can easily say i will first complete my j3 job and then i can complete my j2 job so the deadline is 3 i can easily complete however if i need to extend it i can only include j4 now if i include j4 i need one hour extra so the total will be 4 and my deadline is up till 3 only so i cannot include j4 so this again does not work so what will be my solution the solution will be that minimum penalty is 8 right and what jobs that needs to be included my my solution is j2 and j3 as you can see if i include j2 and j3 and this was not penalty this would have been profit then after completing j2 i would have attained 
10 profit and after completing J3, I would have completed 6 profit and this profit would have been 16 which is the maximum profit. So that's it about this problem. So thank you so much for watching the video.